of traffic, it'll drive over here, and then it's starting to rain, and then it's Saturday, and that you'd rather be in bed, you can forget about all of that. You got up, got a chance to move around, and somebody even got a gift. All right, so today's goal um, for you is to share some classroom management and lesson planning using your Route 52 study. Um, and we're going to start today by talking about classroom management. One of the things that helps to, um, us kind of remember what it is that we're going to be talking about. Now, I will tell you, there will be a handout for you. If you want to take notes, you're more than welcome to, but I will have a handout for you at the very end. Okay. Um, what helps us to kind of remember things sometimes are acronyms. And so I have two acronyms today that I want to share with you that hopefully um, you can take back with you when it comes to classroom management and planning. The first one that we have here is PREP. This is going to be our acronym for classroom management. PREP, okay? The first P stands for practice or post weekly. The R is for reinforce often. often. E is for expectations are clear. And the last P is persistence is vital, okay? So we're going to go through each of these letters and talk about what they mean. The first P is for practice or post them weekly. So I wonder, have your expectations for your children at Children's Church, have they been explained? Have they been practiced? Or have you just, do you just assume that they should know what it is that you want them to do? Do you expect them to sit quietly at Bible story time? Do you expect them to sing along during praise songs? Do you expect them to stay in their seat during snack time? How do they know this? Have you told them? How many times have you told them? And how many different ways have you showed them? Modeling is very, very important. Now, um, I was talking earlier, someone asked what grade that I teach. I teach preschool, pre-K, and kindergarten. So modeling is extremely important at that age. So if you have the 4 to 6 age group, and even the 8 to 12 group, mm -hmm. modeling is so important. So if you're at snack time and you want them to be able to sit in their chair, show them what that looks like. Make no assumptions when it comes to the children that they know what it is that you already want them to do. It causes less frustration on your part, less frustration on their part. So make no assumptions whatsoever, okay? So practice them. Practice them often. And post them, um, depending on whatever the classroom may look like. If you have posters or if you want to come up with some kind of creative way, post them because you will have some readers. And for those who aren't readers, they'll be able to make that connection of, okay, this is what is expected of me every week. But not only does it keep them accountable, it holds you accountable as well as teachers so that every week, every month, Regardless of who's teaching, you have the same expectations that have been posted, posted and have been practiced every single week, okay? Your R for reinforce often. Do you look for ways to encourage the positive moments? It's very, very easy for us to focus on the negative behaviors that go on. It's very easy for us to say, Sarah, stop talking. Sarah, stop touching your neighbor. Joseph, be quiet. How can we reinforce the positive things that we see? Well. Sarah can't stop talking to her neighbor, find someone who's sitting quietly. Joseph, I really like the way that you're sitting quietly. With the younger children especially, mm -hmm. they will begin to feed into that and say, you know what, I want that recognition too. Mm -hmm. So focus on the positive things um, that you see. Mm -hmm. Consider this scenario. Let's say we have a student named Matthew. Matthew constantly talks and he always wants to answer questions without raising his hand. Oh, I know the answer, I know the answer. How can you help Matthew learn what to do without telling him, do not? Are there any suggestions? Not from our teacher back there. <laughs> <laughs> any suggestions? How could you tell Matthew what you want him to do? You want military suggestion? <laughs> well. <laughs> you say without telling him? Without saying the words, do not. Matthew, we understand that the correct way is to hold our hand up. Good, good. Any other suggestion? Please remember to raise your hand before answering questions. Very good. I'm going to call on Susie because she has her hand up. Very good. <coughs> Very good. What does that do at that time? That all the other children, whether they have an answer or not, they want to raise their hand. And they'll want to do it quietly. And hopefully Matthew will get the picture. And as long as you're consistent, he will start to get that picture. But focusing on the positive things that you see, it is so easy for us to focus on the child that may not be doing what it is that we want them to do at that moment. So at that moment, when you get frustrated and Matthew is just, oh, I know, I know, 
take a step back, mm -hmm. find that one child that's doing the right thing, or two or three children that are doing the right thing, and compliment them. Say, you know what, I really appreciate how you're raising your hand quietly. In my classroom, one of the things that I tell my children is when they start talking, if I'm reading the story, when you raise your hand, that lets me know that you have something to say. And I do not respond until they raise their hand. Okay, so whatever your expectation is, which leads us to our next point, your expectation. Whatever your expectation is, let them know that and be firm in that. If the expectation is you raise your hand, I'm not going to listen to what you have to say until you raise your hand, okay? Um, another thing that you can practice is the caught gift. We want to talk about focusing on those positive moments. So if you see someone doing a good thing, I caught you. I caught you raising your hand, or I caught you standing in line quietly. I caught you sitting in your seat at snack time. Focus on those positive things as much as possible, and eventually all of the others who may want to, you know, do what they want to do, they'll come along eventually. So focus in on those positive things, okay? The E, expectations are clear. Are your expectations spoken? Have you said them, or are they just appear? Mm -hmm. Are they posted, and are they kid-friendly? Children's church is about our children. So it's going to be different from when you're in the sanctuary. You're not going to tell a four-year-old, okay, your responsibility today is to make sure that you are listening to the voice of God. Yes, they should, but how can we make that kid friendly? It has to be something that they can relate to. Um, there are two different sets of rules that I want to share with you today. You may already have some, but these are some examples of how they can be kid-friendly. The first one and these are both going to be very short um, rules, no more than five. The first one has five rules, and they're all written in the I can statement. So these are things that they can say every week. Rule number one, I can listen. Okay? And with that, have them model that. You know, maybe I can listen. Okay? Number two, I can keep to myself. Okay? So that means my hands are to myself, my feet are to myself, my voice is to myself. I'm not always trying to talk to my neighbor over here. I can keep to myself. Number three, I can stay in my seat, okay? I can stay in my seat. Number four, I can take turns, whether it's talking, whether it's sharing, whether it's using the crayons, I can take turns. And number five, which I think is one of the most important rules, I can have fun. This should be fun. Mm -hmm. It should be fun, okay? So that's rule number five. Or another set of rules that you can use are the God rules. G stands for give the speaker or the teacher your attention. O, only use righteous or kind words. And D, don't be a space invader. So we're not touching our neighbor. We're not talking to our neighbor. So either five or less short rules, or you can try the God rules, okay? Remind them when they are not following a rule. <clears throat> if a child is disturbing their neighbor, then remind them, I can keep to myself. Now, if you're practicing these every week, then after a while, what you will see is the children will start to remind each other. Mm -hmm. I can keep to myself. I can listen. But you have to practice them every single week. And when you get to those moments where you really want to correct them, stop talking while I'm talking. Think about what the rule is and recite the rule to them. I can listen. And that'll bring them back to the room. Oh, that's one of my rules. I'm supposed to be listening. Okay? So that also helps to keep it in the positive and the affirmative as well. Then our last P for prep is persistent is vital. And I've mentioned a couple of times about being persistent and being consistent. Do you practice the procedures or the rules even after they seem to have mastered them? In June, in July, in December, next January, are you still going back and reviewing this? Because what will happen, a lot of times in children's church, you'll have kids that will come in and you know them, you see them every week. But you also have visitors. The visitors will have no clue as to what your expectations are unless you explicitly tell them. But not only that, it reminds the ones that come every week, mm -hmm. okay, you know what, they're not going to let up. I do have to listen. Or you know what, I guess I do have to sit in my seat because they said it for the last six Sundays straight. So I might as well just sit in my seat. Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure that not only does it keep the children who are here every Sunday on the right track, but our visitors. We want them to feel welcome. We don't want them to feel out of place and not have a clue as to what is expected of them. So every week, making, making sure that you're being persistent. Um, and that you're practicing and posting or talking about and discussing these procedures and the expectations for them at every chance that you get. Okay? I want to share with you 
um, the parable of the sower and the seed. And I'm sure probably most of you have heard this before. But I want to share it with you um, when it comes to children's church. One day, a sower went out into the field to sow some seed. And he took his seed and he threw it all around. Some of the seed fell on the path where people had walked and made the ground real hard. The seed could not penetrate the hard ground, so it just lay there on top of the ground until the birds came and took the seed away. But some of the seed fell on rocky ground. New rocky ground has a thin layer of dirt on top of the layer of rock underneath. The seed that fell on the rocky ground quickly sprouted and grew, but when the sun fell hot on it, it wilted because it didn't have enough roots. Rocky soil wilts plants. Some of the seed fell on thorny ground. The seed quickly sprouted there and grew, but the thorns grew more quickly and soon choked out the good plants. Weeds choke plants. But some of the seed fell on good, fruitful ground. The seed penetrated the ground, sprouted, and grew, having deep, healthy roots. Soon the good ground produced a good harvest of 30, 60, and 100 times more than had been planted. When the apostles were later alone with Jesus, they asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? Jesus said, I speak in parables so that those who want can come to understand what I am teaching. But those who don't want to will not be able to understand. Now listen, and I'll tell the meaning of the parable and the sower. The seed represents the word of God, and the different kinds of ground represent the different kinds of hearts into which the seed is sown. Well, how does this parable relate to classroom management when it comes to children's church? It is our responsibility to prepare our children so that the seeds of God's word fall on good ground, fruitful soil. If we come ready to share the gospel, wanting them to know Jesus and to have a relation with him, and we have not prepped ourselves or the children, then we risk the possibility that our good seeds of God's word fall on thorny or rocky ground. It is imperative that we prep, we practice, post, we reinforce, our expectations are clear, and we're persistent. And we're ready so that they can be ready to receive those good seeds. Good seeds, God's word, must be planted in good ground, firm, fruitful foundation. Okay? So when we think about classroom management, that's why we started there. Because that is our foundation. It will not matter what curriculum we use, how many Bibles we have, how many times we pray, if we do not prepare the soil. So that's why we first started off talking about classroom management, having ourselves ready and our children ready for the lessons that we will have for them. Okay? Any questions at this point? Before we